Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Francesca's Books. My name is Francesca, these are my books, and here we talk all things thriller books. I'm so happy you clicked on this video. Today we are definitely going to read a five-star thriller book, which is very exciting, and I am going to take you along my journey until we get there. So in terms of the actual books that I'm going to read in this vlog, I have decided to take it as it comes. So I've chosen my first book, which I'll tell you about in a minute, and then after that I'm just going to see like what I think could potentially be a five-star next on my massive TBR shelf. I have a few picked out here, which are like potentials to be book number two in this video but I'm not sure I'm really just gonna see how we go. So the first book that I'm going to read is Someone in the Attic by Andrea Mara. I've been really excited to read this because I loved No One Saw a Thing. I gave this a four and a half so my thinking was this had the potential to be a five star, who knows. So I've actually read the first couple of chapters of this book already and it starts off with absolute chaos. So it opens with this woman who is unalived in the bath. She's had like a couple of drinks and supposedly has drowned. However, before that, we get her point of view of somebody hearing footsteps like coming down from the attic and that's how the story opens and then we snap to following like our female main character of the story Julia and she has an ex-husband and two children and it is just kind of their story so her son says that he can hear footsteps in the attic as well and he is really really scared and then it's also told in a dual timeline so the main character Julia and the friend that was unalived in the bath of when they were younger so it is kind of going to be like a connecting the pieces type story but so far the characters have been introduced like in a really gradual way which I really really vibe with. It is Saturday and I have done all of my chores and everything that I needed to do already so I'm hoping that I can just spend the rest of the day reading so I'm hoping to give you guys some really good updates on this today. So I'm gonna go make a nice drink and I will keep you updated. I've got this awesome little Kindle set up where you have like the holder and it's just like attached to my windowsill and then I've got the little clicker thing too. I don't know if you guys have ever seen these. I did a couple of videos on my like book talk and bookstagram about them but I mean they're an absolute game changer. It just means I can get through books so much quicker. Um, I'll pop the links below if you're interested like in the description. I don't know if anyone is. Anyone is actually as lazy girl as me but you never know. So I'm going to read a few more chapters and then I'll let you know what I think. Guys I've just read nearly 200 pages in one go. This book is absolutely gripping. Like, it's kind of creepy, but kind of not. I feel like the pre-warnings I was given going into this was like, prepare to be like really, really creeped out. I mean, I kind of am, but like not at the same time. Like, I don't think this is something you should be worried about like going into. So we've dove way more into like the past of these characters, like the friends that I was talking about in the last clip and like what happened. Without giving any major spoilers, um, something happened to one of the friends and they all feel guilty about it. In the actual like present day story, the son of our main character, Julia, is still very, very scared. He also has this little rabbit that keeps going missing, which is quite sad. Our main character's ex-husband as well, they have a really weird setup. So like they want to keep their children together and in one place. So they like share the house and then they also share an apartment and they just like switch. Never seen that from a divorce couple before. So I feel like the setup is quite weird to start with. And I'm already kind of questioning, like there's a lot that could be played around with there. Like as a thriller girl, I'm always thinking like, um, I wonder why, I wonder why. Like everything is suspicious to me. And then the other friend in real time as well, like in the current timeline is also like quite sus. Like she's got her own stuff going on. So none of these characters can be trusted basically. So the daughter of our main character, Julie is called Isla. And Isla keeps seeing these TikToks of somebody in her house like filming so this is where the actual like person the attic bit comes into the whole equation but they're like but the, nobody's been in the house to like take these videos like they're really specific like they include like art on the wall and pictures that could only be taken like live but like nobody's been in the house like no one at all they've not invited anyone in so i'm up to page 190 i'm gonna go and do something else for a little bit because i'm a little bit i read out so i think i'm gonna go and wash my hair and then i may listen to some of the audio while i'm doing a few other bits this afternoon also i decorated my kindle so nicely and the stickers have just like fallen everywhere I need a better solution. Does anyone have a better solution? So I've just listened to about another 20% or so just while I've been blow drying my hair. Obviously looking lovely now, uh, feeling very fresh. Um, but I'm really, really enjoying the audio because it's set in Ireland, this book. And when the narrator is doing the like speaking parts, the dialogue of the book, it's like in an Irish accent. So like it's really authentic. When I was like reading it physically before, I wasn't reading it in an Irish accent. So now I will when I go to like read the rest. Um, but yeah, absolutely loving it. Really, really enjoying it. I'm feeling like I mean, you can't end the vlog on a five stars straight away, but it's giving, it's giving vibes. 
at this point as well now is when you start to get to like the twists and there's one which I had guessed, I thought I guessed, and then our main character went in like, oh my God, this is it. And I was like, knew it, knew it. Turns out it wasn't actually that. So it was a bit of a double twist. Um, really, really interesting and definitely gripping enough and easy to read. Like I feel like this is a really good weekend read. Like. I'm still in the same day and I feel like I will definitely get this read today. So I'm going to take my little puppy for a walk and I'm going to listen to the rest while I'm walking and yeah, see how far we can get. Since it's Saturday, I've got myself a little treat. Let me show you. I mean, this is what Saturdays are for. So I've just had my pizza as a little tree and I actually finished someone in the attic listening to it while I was like having my tea. It was brilliant, I'm not gonna lie. So here is the tea on that book. Before I give you my overall takeaway, I'm gonna do like a really quick pros and cons of this book. So firstly, it was really fast paced and there were short chapters. So like it was really, really easy to get into and like really easy to keep a track of what's going on. The flashback to like Julia's childhood friends and like that group worked really well like it wasn't overwhelming it almost wasn't a dual timeline it was like a main timeline and there was like a few flashback chapters to that and that worked really really well for me it gave me background on those like main characters and also just like fed into like the overall story i really liked it the plot twist was really really well done i'm gonna try and say not too much to give it away but you know like when you're reading a really stereotypical thriller book they kind of like suspect everyone in the book and then the person that they haven't suspected it's like normally them this was completely different, really caught me off guard um, and really, really enjoyed that. Definitely the highlight of this book is it opened on the most crazy prologue ever. Like I said, it literally opens with this woman being unalived in the bath. So you kind of open it and immediately you're like, oh. I feel like Andrea Mara does prologues really, really well. Okay, so here are the cons and these are the reasons why I did not get that shiny five star. So firstly, if your son was telling you every single night, mum, there is someone in the attic, mum, there is someone looking at me through the vent, mum, I can literally hear somebody breathing every single night, like, you think you'd take him a bit more seriously, like, <laughs> I mean, they obviously check the attic, like, they're not stupid, like, they did, you know, if your son goes, mum, there's someone in the attic, obviously, like, you go check the attic, but, like, they just did not care about this kid, like, the whole book, all he was saying was there's someone in the attic, and they're just like, eh, is there though? And kind of off the back of that, I feel like the name of this book's quite misleading. I feel like it was going to be really creepy and like almost a little bit spooky, like edge of your seat. It was edge of your seat, but not for the reasons I would have thought, like the creepiness. It was definitely more edge of your seat for like the pacing and the twists nothing to do with the attic. So I ended up giving this book four star and it was quite hard for me to land on that because like you saw my enthusiasm throughout like reading this. It was really, really good. But then when I finished and like actually reflected, I was like, there was a couple of things like here and there that I'm just not 100% on. But overall it was a really good book and I definitely would recommend it. I think I gave No One Saw A Thing, the first Andrea Mara book I read, four and a half. And I do think I preferred that one, but doesn't mean this one wasn't good. Like it was a really good book and I definitely would recommend it. So yeah, four stars. So yeah, maybe my expectations were wrong going into this book. I did have a really good time. It's definitely worth a four star. Like a four star is like a really good thriller book for me. Like that is a good thriller, would recommend. Like some of my favorite thriller books that I even talk about on this channel have been four stars. Like that is not a bad rating for me whatsoever. It takes a lot for me to rate a book five star, which is hilarious considering the title of this vlog, but it is true. Yeah, even books like The Couple Next Door by Sherry LaPena, really liked it, talk about it all the time. It, this only got a four, so. There's your bar of comparison. So I have a pile of books that I'm trying to decide between next. I've just like checked them all out on Goodreads to see like what everyone else thought of them to see if they were like good books because I'm like desperate to find this five star. The one I've landed on is Everyone Here Is Lying by Shari LaPena. This is going to be my next read. I really, really like this author. I think I've almost completed a backlist. I haven't given her a five star before. However, this is her latest release. So I feel like... If it's gonna be any book, it's probably gonna be this one. I also thought as well, I'd try and keep this vlog like to more newer releases. So Someone in the Attic only came out, I think about a month ago. I know this came out in 2023, but the paperback version was only released a few months ago as well. So that's why I haven't got to it. Um, the reason I was reading Someone on the Attic on Kindle was because it's only out in hardback and I'm not really a hardback girly. I do have some, they're all, but they're like right at the bottom of my bookshelf. So we're gonna go with Everyone Here Is Lying. So in this, it follows this guy and he's been having an affair. And then one day he comes home and his like nine year old has just been really aggy and he just can't like cope. So he like shouts at her and like, there's a bit of like an incident. Anyway, the next day she's missing. 
spooky. So I think this is basically a missing person story, um, but some of my favourite um, book influencers have love this and I really like the cover of this as well. I feel like it's a bit different to Sherry LaPena's other covers. Maybe I'll pop a couple here so you can see like what I mean, but this is like quite a modern cover and I quite like it. I feel like this was what's drawing me to it the most. So onto book number two of the day. I'm going to um, start this now and yeah, let you guys know what I think. It's very, very early to be vlogging this. It is six something. But I fell asleep last night reading Everyone Here Is Lying, which I, despite falling asleep reading, which is very tired, is really, really good so far. We're still like introducing to our main characters and understanding what's happened. But that like initial bit that I told you about where the dad is like not happy with the daughter and then she goes missing has now happened. So we can get into like the rest of the story, which is very exciting. But I thought I would just pop on really quickly because my best friend is actually taking me to this like crime and thriller only bookshop today in York. So I was gonna quickly pop that in the vlog because I know you guys will just absolutely love that. If you're from the UK, then it might be somewhere that you guys wanna go as well. So I'm up to chapter 10 and this is getting really, really good. I am so gutted that I haven't read this book before now. Like I knew I love Shari LaPena, so I don't know why I didn't prioritize this more. So I feel, I'm getting the feeling that like the police, the detectives in this book aren't stupid. I feel like they're gonna suss out what's happened quite early on in the story and then it's gonna twist and twist after that. Of course, like I'll let you know as we go, but I just feel like these detectives have like already like sussed out what's going on. We don't even know what's gone on, but we kind of like have an idea. I also feel really sorry for like the little brother in this story because Avery, who's the one that's gone missing, like her brother was supposed to like walk her home and then he didn't and he just feels really bad and it's kind of breaking my heart a little bit. And I've said it before, but I'll say it again. I love this cover. I literally love this cover. So I'm going to keep reading, but I have a really, really good feeling about this book. I think this vlog is going to be quite short. Literally so crazy. I've just found out what's happened to Avery this much of the way through the book. So maybe like 60, 70%. So there's a lot more book to go. We found out what's happened to her, but we've not found out why it's happened to her. But I've never had a plot twist come that early. I was like, I like reread the page. I was like, surely. They didn't just reveal that. I really hope like the rest of this book isn't a letdown because I think this is my favourite Shari LaPena book so far, like based on what I've read already. It's like such an easy read as well. Like I'm really, really enjoying it. And there's nothing like major in it that would make me rate it down so far. So we will see. So I'm just heading out to do a few errands now. So I'm going to play the audiobook whilst I'm driving and I might finish it. So that little box shopping trip was extremely unexpected. I was literally just running errands and I just it's just impossible for me to not to go in the works, Waterstones and the charity shops like around where I live. They're just too good. So I thought, may as well include it in the vlog and show you guys what I got. So the first book I bought was Kill For Me, Kill For You by Steve Kavanaugh, which is one of the three for six pounds in the works. And I already have a physical copy because I liked it so much when I saw it was in the works. This one is actually for my mum. So if you're my mum watching this before I give it to you, you didn't see it, but I just know she's going to love it. So I just grabbed another copy. And then also in three for six, I got Square by Celia Warden. So this is the same author that wrote Payday. I think it's on the back of here actually. Oh. And I haven't actually read Payday, made it sound like I had. However, I thought I would start with this author with this book because that is our only other book, Payday. But I've heard really good things about it, so I thought I'd read this release, which is obviously her newest release. And it's also set in West London, which I just have a real soft spot for. My parents used to take me there a lot when I was younger and the book just sounded really good, so I just thought, why not? And then, of course, since it's three for £6, I got a third book and I got the takedown. I have never read anything by this author before, but I thought this would be a perfect romance palette cleanser for this month because I don't have one. I also saw it on the back, obviously read it, loved it, bought it. It's about a girl who tries to stop her sister marrying this like criminal and to do so she befriends the FBI agent in the situation. I think that's where the romance plot comes in. So I saw FBI and bought the book. I'm not gonna lie, that was the main selling point for me. My uh, camera fell. <laughs> 
I was just saying that it is so rare that I buy a book that's not like been personally recommended to me, but this one just called to me and I just thought I had to have it. And then the final book I got was from the British Heart Foundation charity shop and it is at The Midnight Club, which sounds really, really interesting. This is horror and I've been dying for like some shorter books for like spooky season. <laughs> I thought we had it. I thought we'd find our five star, two books in, but unfortunately, it's a 4.5. So don't get me wrong, I did really, really like this book. There's just a few things in the final quarter. It's just not giving me that five star feeling. Like I did not enjoy the way this concluded. I really enjoyed that our main character in this book was a nine year old girl who just seemed really, really sassy. I definitely enjoyed that. And I also enjoyed the fact that out of all these characters at one point or another, I pretty much suspected all of them of the reason of Avery's disappearance. They were all kind of super sus and all had their reasonings and like potential motives. So I feel like the couple of detectives in this book had a very hard job but they didn't do a very good job, but that is besides the point. I'm gonna tell you my prediction because it is so out there that when you read this, you'll be like, why did you even think that? But my honest prediction was, so there was another neurodivergent child who was, I say child, I think he was about 14 or 15. So it was just him and his mum and the dad had um, like left them when they were younger and I thought it was the dad. And even this like tiny family were like such side characters. I don't know why, I just thought that maybe he understood the challenges of having a neurodiverse child and there was just something there but this character was never mentioned ever again after the mum was like no his dad's not on the scene so definitely miscalled that I think my brain just like runs with these things now because I'm like no it can't be so and so that's way too obvious and then sometimes it is sometimes it isn't but if you read this book you probably don't even know which characters I'm talking about because they were that minor but besides the point. So the reason this is a four and a half, not a five, is because the end just didn't really hit for me. Firstly, there was absolutely no closure on the situation whatsoever. This book finished and I literally was like, looking for more, like looking for an epilogue or like more pages. I was like, surely not. And I hate it when books do that. Like I used to quite enjoy it when there was like an ambiguous ending and I'd be like, oh my God, like I wonder what happened. And now I'm just like, if it doesn't conclude, I can't get on board with it. I need to know what happened. And also the way things went in just like these final, like maybe 20%, like it was really, really far-fetched. And do you know what? I didn't even mind it being far-fetched. Like it's fiction at the end of the day. So it was quite interesting, but I finished it and I just thought, it's not a five star, but then I thought it is definitely my favorite Shari Le Penna book that I've read so far. So I definitely would still recommend it, but for the purposes of this vlog, the search continues. And the search is going to continue with, drum roll, Strange Sally Diamond, because I've not seen anyone rate this like not a five star. Like it seems to be a love it or hate it book. So anybody that's liked it, it's been like five star, one of the best books I've read, absolutely loved it. But then people who haven't been a fan, it's been like really low. I've not really seen any mixed opinions. So I'm hoping that I'm gonna be on the side of love it. I've also seen some really, really, really fantastic reviews from people's um, pages that I really trust on this. So I'm hopeful. I also actually had tickets to meet the author of this book, Liz Nugent, um, at a lovely independent bookshop called Lingham's, which is um, just outside of Liverpool. However, I was poorly, my voice still isn't really back. So it would have just not been possible um, if you weeks ago but I did get a signed copy of the book because I was supposed to attend and obviously paid for it so that is really fun that um, this author has actually had this book and signed this book so this book seems really character driven which isn't normally my cup of tea but I do just have a really good feeling about this so like the little intro is Sally Diamond cannot understand why what she did is so strange she was only doing what her father told her to to put him out in the rubbish when he died okay so I'm gonna dive straight in So I've just been reading in the coffee shop for a little while. I managed to get all my work done like a little bit earlier than normal. So I thought I would treat myself, go get a Cafe Nero and carry on reading Strange Sally Diamond. And I'm now maybe like 80% of the way through. This only got this little bit left. And I'm just really surprised how much I like this book. So the story's continued on about the effects of Sally after her like traumatic childhood. She's managed to make like loads of friends as an adult, which I mean, I need some tips how do you make friends as an adult because this girl's doing a lot better than me. I'm not sure how realistic that would be because without spoiling it, there's a massive trauma in her childhood. Everybody knows who she is. And you would think that people were just kind of out there to like make friends with her and see what was going on. 
Hope they want to be in the vlog too. Also, about the 20% mark, a dual timeline came in, which was very exciting, um, of a teenage boy. And I don't really know how much to say in this because I think this is going to be a really, really good read and I don't want to spoil anything because I went to this book completely blind, literally having read that Sally had put her dad out with the trash after he died. Like That's all I knew about this book, that she was a bit... There was clearly something wrong with her. And I just feel like that's the best way to go into this. If I'd have known more, I don't think I'd have been as drawn to it because I feel like as I've gone, the plot's developed in a way that if I knew that some of these things were coming, I wouldn't have been like so excited about it. Anyway, things are really starting to come together now. And I like our main character, Sally, so much more than I thought I was going to the beginning. So much more. I've read characters like this before, as I mentioned, like in The Maid. I feel like that's the best example by Nita Prose. There's like quite a socially awkward main character called Molly and I thought it was going to be a bit of a copy and paste to this just like a bit darker but Sally's actually really funny like unintentionally funny without trying and I never ever normally gravitate to these types of characters but in this book I definitely am. I do just feel like this book is a complete breath of fresh air like I was reading some of the comments from like some of my favourite thriller authors on the back like what they thought about it and it's so unique it's so unique yeah you need to read this. I also felt myself like really drawn to read this book like normally I wouldn't like try and get all my work done to be able to read like I just feel super drawn to this and like that I want to sit down and read it so I'm definitely going to finish this tonight I've only got I think it was about 70 or so pages left so I will let you know what I think once I finish I have finished Strange Sally Diamond I actually finished it last night and I knew I would because I was just too enthralled in this book I needed to know what happened so before I give you my thoughts on the ending of this book let's recap on exactly what we thought so far so this book had an explosive beginning like it starts with Sally literally incinerating her late dad's remains I mean what a crazy gal then with a bit of help from like her amazing community that she'd built over the last year or so she really tries to like rebuild her life and like heal from the past trauma that he's kind of gone into detail in in the book. I'm going to caveat this right now by saying there is probably a million trigger warnings in this. It is very, very dark. Everything that you could probably be triggered by is present in this book. So if you're going to go into it, definitely just check that beforehand if there's anything specific that you try and avoid. So having finished the book, I'm not sure I would actually class this as a thriller, like reflecting on my entire reading experience of it. I really do think it is like a dark contemporary there wasn't any major plot twists that weren't sort of just naturally embedded into the narrative. There was nothing that you were kind of like, actually, maybe there was. Is that unfair to say there was no plot twists? Depends how into your thrillers you are. Anyway, our main character, Sally, did definitely fall into that like category of like the maid type character and how to kill your family. Like that was very much the vibe of this book still. However, it was definitely, definitely like the most character driven book that I have also genuinely enjoyed. I love this character. I love that it was told in dual point of view that kept it really, really fresh. I love the characters in it, but the ending just did not hit. I decided to give it a four star. And I think that's fair considering it was a really, really, really good book and then the ending was probably more like a two or a three so I would put this at a full start and it is definitely a book that I would recommend particularly if you enjoyed these books that I'll pop here I just think you will love this this is really like a book on its own it's very unique so the search continues for our five star read of this vlog but I mean I don't think we're doing too badly because we've had two four stars and a four and a half star so far so I feel like that is a really good place to be and the books that I've read in this vlog so far have been really good so like they're good recommendations to take away but we need that five star we need that shiny five so at this point I was getting a little bit desperate and I decided to pick a couple of books that I've had my eye on and have been really really highly rated and recommended to me and then ask you guys on Instagram like which one you thought I should start with because Clearly my decisions are not paying off in terms of five stars. So the two books that I was considering were The Drowning Woman and Look Closer. And I've put a poll up and it's only been up for a few hours. So I'm hoping it doesn't change, but I'm just desperate to get into my next read. So we're going to see the results. So the results are in. With 59% to 41%, we're going to be reading drowning woman honestly i'm quite happy about that like i'm not mad at the outcome of that poll because i actually had the drowning woman on my october tbr last year so 2023 but i just couldn't get my hands on a copy i don't know why i think it was only published in america at the time it is published in the uk now definitely however i'm gonna get this on my kindle because i'm like really desperate for a kindle read the last two books that i've read have been physical and we all know how much easier it is reading on kindle so i've got my kindle charged and ready and i'm really excited to start this so this book actually follows 
follows two female main characters one of them is homeless just like absolutely hates her life like never thought she'd be in this situation and the other female main character is like really wealthy has a husband has kids like from the outside like just looks like she has it all until one day our homeless female main character sees her like trying to unalive herself and she's like i don't even want to be here and the story kind of goes from there and i think it's a bit of a case of this homeless lady who has had like a really shit time basically wants what she has and then tries to get it and then i think it's like a, once she's got it she realizes exactly how bad it is i think that's the premise <laughs> you guys know i hate knowing too much about a book and when i initially saw this book like last year it was kind of pitched as like two women swap lives so maybe that's what happens um but it does sound really exciting as soon as i put that poll up i actually got a couple of messages that were like oh my god i can't believe you've not read the drowning woman like absolutely need to read it so i'm just gonna dive in and just see what i think and fingers crossed it's a five star and if it's not a five star then you guys have another book recommendation to go up see you very soon <laughs> I literally just don't even know what to say at that first part. This book is incredible, like literally incredible. We've been following the point of view of, of Lee, which is our homeless main character for the first part. And then now it's flipped to Hazel and I'm just absolutely shook at the last part. There's four parts of this as well. So I think I'm just gonna keep being shook every time. My God, this is, this is so good. Also the writing style of this is so easy to read. My friend Sammy, who has an English degree, has told me that what I'm referring to is the prose, but that sounds too technical for me. But I mean like the actual sentences, like the actual, not like the structure of it, just like the sentences themselves are really easy to read. Love it, absolutely love it guys. I'm so excited to go and read some more, but I just had to tell you how shook I was at the end of that first part. Is it spooky season yet? I think it is. Today's day is August 19th and we're out with the Halloween mugs. I think it's acceptable. A little orange inside. Got an iced coffee still though. We've not gone to hot coffee yet. Still haven't had a pumpkin spice, but I think it's spooky season. So last night I read 150 pages of The Drowning Woman pretty much in one go until my eyes could not physically stay open any longer. And I think this is one of the best books that I've read in a really long time. So I'm 60% of the way in and I've decided I'm not gonna listen to any more on audio because I literally just want to savor every single word of this book like i'm not wasting audio on two times speed on this masterpiece so last time i updated you we switched points of view to the other female main character and now we've switched back again and there was a probably equally as shocking plot twist at the end of her part as well i saw the second one coming didn't see the first one coming but they're both just as shocking so we're now back on lee's perspective which is our homeless female main character and now she has so many more problems than she started with at the start of this book like you opened and it showed like how shocking her life was being homeless and now it's like god girl i feel so sorry for you <laughs> another thing which i'm just absolutely loving in this book is there isn't a massive character pool but the writing is just so incredible and i feel like that's quite a hard balance to get because the writing tends to drop if there's not as many characters because there's not really as much to talk about but then when you start introducing loads of characters then the writing seems to become better but like finding a balance is so hard and this author is just nailing it. So I've got a bit of work to do today and I think I might finish this today even though I've got quite a bit left to go. I don't normally read this much this fast but I mean like how can I not? Like literally how can I not? As a brief little interlude to this vlog I thought I would once again come on with a little book haul. Some of these I've ordered, some of them I've bought in person, some of them have been gifted. I think one was PR so I'm going to share them with you now. These are the ones that I'm literally just the most excited to read the most. I have a full book haul either coming or just posted that I will pop up here if you are interested and the majority of these are like gone into further depth but I just wanted to really quickly share them with you. So the first one I was sent from Chicken House Publishers which was extremely kind. Didn't know which book they were going to send me but they sent me The Dark Within Us which basically sounds like Lucifer 2.0 happy days so this basically follows our female main character who goes to a party and meets our male main character whose family rules hell. Not sure the ins and outs, but I mean, who wouldn't want to read that? Especially coming up to spooky season. Who wouldn't want to read that? I do. And then next up is Homewrecker, which I was actually kindly sent by the same publisher as Frida McFadden. And they were like, do you want to give this a go? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And it does sound a little bit Housemaid-esque vibes, but from Nina's point of view, as opposed to from Millie's point of view. So it follows this, our female main character, she has two kids and a husband, and one of the kids is playing up. So she hires this child expert to come in and like try and help with like her troubled child. However, one day she comes home and like 
this woman is like all over her husband and kind of like infiltrate the family a bit. And I just feel like this will just give good vibes and be like quite an easy read. So excited for that one. And then next up, I got a copy of The Only One Left, which is my favorite Riley Sager book. So I mainly got this as a little trophy. I read it on Kindle and didn't have a physical copy, but now it's here. I'm definitely gonna reread it. It's my favorite Riley Sager book and I'm just such a huge fan. It was definitely one of my top picks of 2023 and I just can't recommend it enough really. This book is basically The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo as a thriller is the best way to sum it up, but like way more spooky, way more dark. Fantastic. Next up, I have two books which are on my spooky season reading vlog agenda of the next reading vlog that I am going to film. That was kind of like in a little bit of preparation. And the first one is the book which if you type in anywhere, the best spooky season read, this is just the book that comes up everywhere. Of course it is The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. Since this has been recommended so many times, I do actually have quite a good idea of what it's about. And it follows our female main character who 30 years previously auntie worked at this hotel or was at this hotel motel sorry not hotel um and disappeared without a trace or disappeared in a suspicious way so then 30 years later she gets a job there to try and like work out what happened and just like dig into the past and i think it's bought i think it either is paranormal borders on paranormal definitely like a th horror thriller not a thrown through thriller but i'm very very excited to read it and then the second book in this category completely differently is cackle by rachel harrison which one of my friends on bookstagram emma actually rated five star and she is just a thriller reader like myself so i thought hmm maybe this would be like a good palette cleanser horror thriller contemporary so it follows a woman who was really settled had a really good job in manhattan and decides to move after a bad breakup she gets there and everything's still going absolutely fine but then she meets this woman who's just like a complete enigma and she's just like obsessed with her she's like what is going on here and i think i think she's a witch deliciously dark feminist tale of witches knew it bad ex-boyfriends good coffee and friendly spiders see doesn't that sum me up except for spiders i don't know any spiders and then the final book that I've got recently, which I'm so excited to read because I've had my eye on it for so long, I loved The Kind Worth Killing by this author, and it is Nine Lives. So we're back to our through and through thriller, guys, don't worry, I will never stray too much. Ever. This book actually follows, I hope it doesn't follow all nine of them, but there is nine strangers that are just on this list, on this piece of paper, and just that gets delivered in a letter to all nine of them. So I think it'll probably be a case of like trying to work out who the others are who've been given this and like what the consequences are of that. I really, really love how this author writes characters, so I'm really, really, just really excited to give this one a read. So without further ado, I'm going to go read more of The Drowning Woman, probably go and grab a coffee somewhere and let you guys know what I think. Could this be? Our five star read. We did it, we did it, we found a five star. I finished The Drowning Woman last night and I could give this book nothing less than a five star. It was absolutely brilliant, fantastic, no notes. Well, a couple, I'm calling to them now. I do want to quickly caveat this by saying this isn't actually my normal five star read, I don't think. It is a thriller. But there's definitely like some suspense elements and it's very character driven as opposed to plot driven and those aren't the books that i tend to rate really highly but i think this book just had like such a good combo and an amazing number of plot twists like i just love it i just I, i'm so happy i feel so happy so firstly i absolutely loved our main character lee there was something really really special about this character i think i don't also normally gravitate towards characters like that and the way this character was written, I absolutely loved her. So obviously it was told from Lee's perspective, who was the homeless main character, and then Hazel's, who was like the more wealthy female main character. I didn't really click as much with Hazel, but I didn't not like her. I was rooting for her too, but mainly Lee. I really liked as well that this author split this into four parts and had like a little plot twist at the end of each part. I really, really liked that. It kind of reminded me of like John Mars's style of writing where like, every 70 or 80 pages you get something that like really changes the narrative and for some people that is too much they don't like the plot twists like throughout the book and they say that that you know it's too centered on those twists but for me personally that that's what engages me as a reader and that's what I'm always gonna like recommend and look for and that really really worked for me I feel like it just keeps you really hooked in you're like oh my god and then now you have to like read the next few chapters because you're like how's it even possible like it just works do you know and then the epilogue of this book I think that's why it's get all five stars, to be honest. So the first three parts were a five star. The last part, I was kind of getting a bit like, oh, I don't know, maybe it's going to be a 4.5. I'm just, I don't know. And then the epilogue came and I was like, yeah, it's a five. 
it's definitely a five. The only teeny tiny note I had on this, still a five star, but the only tiny note is, it's not a spoiler to say that like these main two characters that I've been talking about throughout this whole vlog know each other. And I just wish that like towards the end they could have like worked together like a little bit more. Isn't a spoiler, just had more of a liaising i think i highly highly recommend this book it isn't actually published in the uk in paperback and i don't think it's published in hardback in the uk either so i did obviously read it on my kindle but i do know you can order a copy like if you don't have a kindle you can order it off amazon i think it just takes a little bit like longer to get here but due to the success of this book i've no doubt that a uk publisher will pick it up if you if it's not like top of your list to read but just thought it was worth mentioning. So in this vlog, we have read two four stars, one 4.5 star and a five star read, which I think is like super successful because it's meant that you guys have got recommendations like of good books as well. Like my all the books I've read in this vlog have been really good and I would recommend all of them. Obviously the point was to find a five star, but sometimes you read books and you're like, well, two, two and a half, but that hasn't been the case. So I'm really happy because it's given you guys all the more recommendations to go for. So thank you for joining me on this journey to find a five star read. My final five star read of course is The Drowning Woman and I would definitely recommend this and don't forget to like and subscribe to join me next time.